Here we go. Playoff freaking basketball has begun. We had an amazing day of it yesterday, and today we are continuing on. Immediately after I finish this video, I'm going to go watch the Sixers beat the Wizards. Please, God, don't let me be jinxing my team here. But... There is one series happening today, and that's the one I'm actually going to talk about. It's not the Sixers and the Wizards, because we know that that one's a wash. Sorry, Wizards fans, but if you really think your team's beating the Sixers, you're delusional. Sorry, that's just how it is. The Suns and the Lakers, however, is a series that could actually be very competitive, even though the general NBA media and fan base seems to have already decided that this series is a wash and the Lakers are going to win. And let me just get this out of the way. I'm not saying that you're wrong at all if you were taking the Lakers, and if I'm being completely honest, my pick right now is Lakers in seven. I do think they will win this series. However, I am surprised to see that Pretty much literally everyone has already written off the Suns. All season long, they've gotten more respect than the Jazz. People have been saying that they're real contenders now. They've got Chris Paul. They've got a great team. they got a deep team. And all of a sudden, now they're a first round out? Guaranteed? I know they're facing the Lakers, but this isn't the 100% Lakers that we expected coming into this season. This is the Lakers with LeBron James, who is hobbled, with an Anthony Davis who's barely played this year, and with a terrible offense, the number 24 offense in the entire NBA. Now, I know they've had a lot of injuries, but still, it just seems a little weird to me that the Suns are not getting any support whatsoever from the general NBA fan base, and I just wanted to come in here today and give them a bit of credit, because even though I am taking the Lakers, I could absolutely see the Suns stealing this series, all right? If you look at their roster, the Suns currently have the third best net rating in the entire NBA. They've got a top 10 offense and a top 5 defense. I said that backwards. They've got a top 5 offense and a top 10 defense. There we go. They have Chris Paul, who is still, in my opinion, a borderline legit superstar. It's hard to call him a real one, but man, is he a really good player. They've also got Devin Booker, who is a phenomenal scorer, just had the best season of his career. Paul, like I said, he's still playing great. They've got a ton of defense on this roster between Paul, Mikhail Bridges, Jay Crowder, Cameron Johnson off the bench has been a better defender, and DeAndre Ayton has been a significantly better defender this season. Not saying he's going to clamp up Anthony Davis or anything, but he has been better than he was in previous years. This team has phenomenal playmaking with Chris Paul and a little bit of it coming from Booker and Cameron Payne off the bench. They've got good rebounding with Ayton and Jay Crowder and even Dario Saric doing a little bit out of it this year. All right. They have great scoring all around. Devin Booker is obviously a bucket machine and they've got a whole lot of guys scoring in the teens along with Cameron Johnson off the bench along with Dario Saric and Cameron Payne. They have a very deep bench. The defense off the bench isn't great. Dario Sarge is not a great defender by any means. Cameron Johnson is slightly above average if you're being nice, but probably more of an average defender, honestly. Uh, Cameron Payne, Torrey Craig. Torrey Craig's an alright defender, but, you know, they're, they're not like a super deep bench in terms of defense, but they have a phenomenal offense off the bench. Dario Sarge has played very, very well for them, although I do worry about their size mismatch against the Lakers, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. But looking at the rest of this team, they're just so great. Mikhail Bridges is probably going to make an all-defense team this season. He's been shooting lights out. They're just a great team. You've got Jay Crowder and Mikael Bridges to put on LeBron James and Anthony Davis to give them issues if you're playing AD at power forward. If you're playing AD at center, you put DeAndre Ayton on him, you pray for the best. Yeah, it's not an amazing matchup. AD's going to go off. But maybe DeAndre Ayton and the rest of the team playing very good help defense like they have all season can do enough to slow him down. Mikael Bridges, same thing. He's not going to lock down LeBron James, but we saw... Um, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Andrew Wiggins the other day give him issues in the Warriors games, and I think Mikael Bridges can do the exact same thing. Yeah, he's not going to clamp him, but he is a big, long defender who's smart enough on the defensive end to give LeBron James a little bit of problem. Jay Crowder, you can also switch on to him pretty well. Chris Paul's a very good defender. We all know this. Devin Booker's the only real issue. You look at this team, and you look at the Lakers, and my thought is, here's, here's the way that I see the Suns winning. They've got great switchable defense, like I said, 
Bridges, Crowder especially. Torrey Craig off the bench can do a little bit of that. Um, Cam Johnson has length at least. Chris Paul is going to do a good job on the guards, like Dennis Schroeder, who has a rather predictable offensive game, even though he is a very good offensive player. I could see Chris Paul giving him issues. And then on the other end, they've got nobody to guard Devin Booker or Chris Paul. They don't. Okay, you can sit there and you can put... You know, Dennis Schroeder is going to be, or Dennis Schroeder, why, why did I call him that? Dennis Schroeder is going to be barbecue chicken. Kyle Kuzma is going to be barbecue chicken on literally anyone he tries to guard in this series. Mikhail, excuse me, Mikhail Bridges isn't going to do a whole lot. You know, Jay Crowder's not going to do a whole lot, but their main thing isn't scoring anyway. But Chris Paul and Devin Booker are going to absolutely cook this team. Devin Booker especially. I wouldn't be surprised if he averages 30 points a game in this series. I really wouldn't. That's what I'm expecting from him. He is going to be cooking, and he is a good enough playmaker. There's enough playmaking on this team, like I said, that if you sit there and try to de double Devin Booker to slow him down, you're going to be leaving good shooters open. You're going to be leaving a very good lob threat in DeAndre Ayton open, and I could absolutely see the Suns winning this series. I think it goes six or seven games no matter what happens, but it would not be crazy to me for the Suns to come out and to beat the Lakers in the first round, and at that point, if the Suns can beat the Lakers, they could make the NBA Finals. Honestly, I would probably take the Clippers over a series against them, and the Jazz would be very, very close, but they absolutely could make the NBA Finals, and I think that people need to acknowledge that. Now, I have already said that I am taking the Lakers, and there's one simple reason for that, okay? Well, there's technically two, like, there's more detailed one, but the main one is you don't bet against LeBron James in the playoffs. You just don't. Um, I learned that the hard way many times, and I am only a recent basketball fan, so I learned that in 2018 when I didn't pick them to make the finals. I thought they'd lose to the Celtics, LeBron James Cavs, that is, and then last year, I didn't pick them to make the finals and win the finals, and they proved me wrong again. You do not bet against LeBron James. It is a bad bet every single time. However, LeBron James is also usually healthy in the playoffs. This year, he is not. He is dealing with a high ankle sprain, and even though that's not going to keep, you know, keep him out completely, we saw it against the Warriors the other day. He looked a little bit slow, he looked a, bit, a little bit passive, a little bit less explosive, and that could be enough to stop him against a very, very good Phoenix Suns team. Now, I'm not sure he's going to. And even if he does underperform just a little bit, if he can play at 80% of himself, the Lakers may still be good enough because the Suns don't have anyone to stop Anthony Davis. The Lakers are definitely a bigger team. They have a good defense, and even though their offense has struggled this year, it's going to be much, much better with LeBron and AD there. I think Anthony Davis is going to have a great series in this series, and I don't even like Anthony Davis that much, so that makes me sad, but I really think he's going to eat. The question is how well the Suns can slow down and stop LeBron James, and then the good defense they can play on their other role players. If Chris Paul can really lock up Dennis Schroeder, that is a huge blow to the Los Angeles Lakers. They are not especially deep in terms of offense. It's why their offense has been pretty butt this year when LeBron James and Anthony Davis have been out. So once again, to reiterate, I believe the Lakers will win this series. I'm taking them in seven games, but this series could very easily go either way. If you support the Suns, do not let Lakers fans convince you that, that is a stupid bet because for basketball purposes, I would take the Suns, but man, LeBron James, he does it every year. Every year we count him out and every year he comes out of there and he proves me wrong. So I have not yet been convinced to bet against LeBron James and I am still taking the Lakers in this series, but it's going to be a very, very good series. Don't sleep on the Phoenix Suns.